In today's video, we're going to look at writing network problems as linear programs. We're going to focus on these three network problems. So these are network problems that we have met before on this course, but we have used different algorithms to solve them. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at writing a linear program uh, which will solve these problems. In the next video, we'll look at these three problems, matchings, allocations, and transportations. These are problems that we have not met previously on the course, uh, but we need to be able to write a linear program to solve them. Um, in terms of actually solving the linear programs that we're going to be creating, you don't need to do that using the simplex algorithm because these programs quite often have 10 or more variables. Um, so what the exam will do is it will run the program through a software and then give you the output of that software. And then you need to interpret that. So we'll look at that in a future video as well. Today's video, though, we're just going to focus on writing the linear program for these three problems. So first problem is shortest distances. Um, so we have a network here, and my first problem is we want to find the shortest distance from A to G. Now, we would use Dijkstra's algorithm usually to solve this problem, but it doesn't ask us in the question to use Dijkstra's. It asks us to write a linear program uh, to find the shortest distance from A to G. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce uh, a number of variables. And for this problem, these variables are going to be what we call indicator variables. And I'll write that at the top here. In dicator variables. And what that means is the variables are either one or zero. There's the only two uh, possibilities that these variables can take. And a one as an output means that we are using the arc that it represents. And a zero as an output means we are not using the arc that it represents. So let's start with um, the constraints. I think it's going to be slightly easier. Um, uh, so let's look at what a shortest distance from A to G will look like. Well, we're going to have a path somewhere through the network which will take us from node A to node G. I don't know what that path looks like, but it's going to be a path which means it must be solid all the way through, which means if you enter a node between A and G, you must also leave that node. So, for example, if I enter B, then I must leave B. Or if I enter C, then I must leave C to get to G. So for all the intermediary nodes, I have to pass through them. So let's take node C as an example. If I enter node C, which could be represented as AC plus DC plus EC. So that's all the arcs into node C. I can either go into C via A, via D, or via E. Then I must also leave node C. Now, if I'm going to leave node C, I'm not going to go back to A because that is where I started. So I can actually ignore that arc. But I could leave via D. So that means I'm going to do minus CD, or I could leave towards E. So that's minus CE equals zero. Now, one could argue that you could do AC plus DC plus EC equals CD plus CE. But for these problems, we tend to put all of the variables on one side of the equation. Also notice that I've got a DC and a CD. These are two different variables. If DC is the number one, then that means I am going from node D to node C within my solution. Um, but if CD is 1 instead, then that means I'm actually going from node C to node D in my solution. So although these look very similar, they are different variables. Um, and the number of variables I have will be almost equal to twice the number of arcs I have. Because on all of these arcs, I can go in either direction, except for the arcs out of the start, which I'm only going to leave the start. I'm not going to go back to the start. Or the arcs into the finish. Because once I go into the finish, I'm not then going to leave again. So these four arcs, AB, AC, DG, and FG, those are going to be one-way arcs, and they're only going to have one variable attached to them. But all the other arcs, are intermediary arcs. They go between a pair of intermediary nodes, uh, so they're going to have two variables attached to them. Um, notice also I've got the difference between EC and CE as well. 
Okay, so that gives a flavour of how many variables we're going to be looking at. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 arcs. That's 20 variables minus the four um, which aren't duplicated. So I've got 16 variables in this problem. Okay. Hopefully you can appreciate why we do not use simplex uh, to solve this problem. Okay, um, so that is going to deal with all the intermediary nodes. So I'm going to repeat that process for all of the nodes which are not the start or the finish. Um, so that's obviously node C, but I've got to repeat that for B, D, E and F as well. Um, and then I've also got to leave node A, um, which means either A, B or A, C is going to be the number one. So I must have A, B plus A, C as being equal to the number one. What that forces is either A, B is one and A, C is zero, in which case... I'd be using this route out of the start node, or AB is zero and AC is one, in which case I would be leaving the start node via this route. But it has to be exactly one of those. It can't be both, can't be none. It's exactly one. Okay, and all of these variables, don't forget, are either one or zero. Nothing else, nothing in between, uh, nothing bigger than one, nothing less than zero. And then I also need to uh, make sure I end up at the end node. Uh, without leaving it. Uh, so to get to the end node, I'm either going to be using DG or FG. Uh, for the same argument, just backwards. Okay. To get to G, I'm either going to be coming in via D and then stopping, or coming in via F and then stopping. Um, can't be both, can't be none. It's got to be exactly one of those two arcs. And that's what this constraint represents. Okay, so those are the, uh, the constraints that we're going to be looking at. Um, so that's going to give us seven constraints. Um, and then what about the objective? Well, we want to minimise the total distance uh, that we are going to be taking to get from A to G. So we want to minimise um, uh, the weights of these arcs times these variables. So we're going to minimise uh, the total distance, which you could call D. Okay, D is not a variable that's used. Uh, you could call it W for weight, you could call it your standard P or C for minimise. It really doesn't matter what you call it. Sometimes it's defined in the question as well, so just pay attention to that. And it's going to be equal to the sum of all the arc weights times the variables. So if AB is used in our shortest distance, then 6AB will be the piece of the variable which will count six towards it. So if AB is used, then that variable is the number one, which means that's going to contribute six to my total distance D. The alternative is AB is zero and the arc AB is not used, in which case that won't contribute anything to my total distance D. Okay, And I need to repeat that then for every single variable. So I've got 16 of those. So plus three AC. And then at node B, I've got plus eight BD. And don't forget, going the other way, 8db. Okay, I need to do both of those because they're two different variables. And then I've also got plus uh, 12cd plus 12dc and so on. All the way up to my end, uh, which would be plus 5dg, say. Okay, um, so in an actual exam, uh, we would look to write out all of those um, values in the objective um, should give us this. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's my objective, objective function. That's all 16 variables uh, with their uh, coefficients, with their arc weights. And then we would also put in all seven of my constraints. So one for each node. Uh, so it was AB plus AC equals one. DG plus FG equals one. Uh, those are start and ends, and all the rest are going to be zero. So if I enter node B as AB plus DB, then I must leave node B, so that's minus BD equals zero. Okay, so if one of these is the number one, then that must be the number one. And if both of those are the number zero, that must be the number zero. So either I enter node B, I must leave it, or I don't enter node B, and I don't leave it. Um, AC plus DC plus EC minus CD minus CE is zero. So if I enter C, I leave C. Uh, same at D. 
BD plus CD plus ED plus FD. Don't need to go from G to D because uh, that isn't one of my variables. Because if I get to the end node, I'm not going to be leaving it to get to D. So I don't need to do that one. Uh, minus DB, minus DC, minus DE, minus DF, minus DG. That must equal zero. Uh, e, I've got uh, CE plus DE plus FE. Okay, so there's three ways into node E, either via C, D or F. And then I can leave uh, via any of those three as well. So EC minus ED minus EF. And then finally, my last constraint is at node F. So I've got two in and three out. Okay, so DF plus EF, there's the only ways I can get in. And then I've got FD, FE, and then I could also go to G. Okay, if I run that program, okay, this objective function with these seven constraints, then the output will give me the uh, or unoptimal solution to uh, this distance problem. Okay. All right, so that's the minimum distance problem. Uh, that's the first one. Uh, the second one we're going to look at is called the network flows problem. Now, unlike the minimum distance problem, the network flows problem does not use indicator variables. Um, so no indicator variables here. And the reason for that is because unlike the shortest distance problem, it's not a, not a situation of either using the arc or not. It's actually asking the question, well, how much flow do I have going through each arc? So, for example, from node S to A, I could have a flow of 50 or I could have a flow of 52 or I could have a flow of 65. There's any number in between 0 and 100 um, that I could have between uh, uh, S to A. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a different problem uh, to the, uh, um, the shorter distance. Um, but the idea of this is to maximise the flow through the network. So if you remember doing network flows, we know that the flow through the network is actually equal to either the flow out of the start node or is equal to the flow into the sync node. Sometimes a question will specify whether it wants it out of the source or into the sink. So just make sure you're paying attention to the question. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to stick with flow out of the source. So I want to maximise the flow out of the source. So my objective then is to maximise the flow out of the source, which I'm going to call F, uh, which is going to be equal to uh, um, SA plus SB plus SC. I don't need to worry about any other variables at this stage, although there would be one variable attached to every arc in this network, um, because then that variable tells us how much flow is going through that pipe. Okay, now there are a number of constraints that we're going to need to uh, implement. Uh, the first type of constraint that we're going to look at is considering, well, if we have a certain amount of flow going into a node, then we must have that flow out of that node as well. It is true that flow does not accumulate or is sourced from any intermediary node. The only node that has a source is the source node, and the only node where flow will accumulate is the sync node. So all the other nodes, all the flow in must equal all the flow out. So we're going to have a similar looking um, constraint from the previous problem here. So subject to, um, let's take node A, for example, all the flow into A, which is going to be the variable SA plus BA, must equal all the flow out of node A, which is equal to the variable AE. Notice also I'm using that same idea that if I'm going from A to E, then it is AE, not EA. So all the flow into A, which is SA plus BA, that must equal all the flow out of A, which is AE. And that must equal zero. OK, so whatever goes in must come out. Okay, Flow in minus flow out equals zero, which is a rearrangement of flow in equals flow out. OK, but the same as the previous case, uh, we put all the variables on the same side of the equation. 
We're going to repeat that process for all of the intermediary nodes. So I've done A, we've also got B, C, D, E, F and G to do. OK, so that's the first type of constraint. Um, I'll do B as well. So just if you want to have um, a few seconds to pause the video, just have a think about what the flow at B uh, would be a constraint. OK, so at node B, all the flow into node B, which is either from S or C, must equal all the flow out, which is going to be to A, E, F and D. So flow in, we're going to have SB plus CB. OK, those are the only two arcs that are going into node B. And then coming out, we've got to A, D, E and F. So minus BA, minus B, D, minus B, E minus bf equals zero and don't forget these are not indicator variables anymore so they're not either zero or one uh, they are um, any number up to and including the pipe capacity okay so it's the amount of flow going through each arc so that's the first type of constraint okay that's the net flow um, uh, at each node must be zero the second type of constraint is looking at each arc um, if we don't constrain the arc lengths, then uh, this uh, this program will blow up because SA, SB and SC can be infinite. So we must restrict these uh, these variables. Um, so the maximum flow through this pipe here is 100. So we're going to add the constraint SA must be less than or equal to 100. Don't forget that linear programs automatically assume that all positive uh, all variables are non-negative. So we, we don't have to put in that it's between 0 and 100. Um, that's fine. Okay. And we repeat that for every arc. Um, so all of our variables then are constrained. So for example, this arc here, um, flow goes from B to A. So we're going to have the constraint BA is less than or equal to 50. Okay, because the flow through that pipe cannot exceed 50. Or this one over here, DG, that can't be more than 10. So we're going to have DG is less than or equal to 10 and so on. We're going to have one of these uh, pipe capacity constraints for each pipe. Um, how many have we got all together? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 variables again, uh, similar to the previous case. Um, OK, so let's just take that and put it all together. There we go. Uh, so that is what this uh, entire program will look like. OK, we've got the flow out of um, the source. We want to maximise the flow, subject to these constraints, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are the net flow zero constraints, each of my intermediary nodes, so A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then we also have these pipe constraints, so 16 pipe constraints there, um, that restrains the flow through each pipe. Okay, so that finishes that problem. Uh, that is the linear program which will solve that problem. Um, but I also wanted to address a situation um, where you might have a network flow which doesn't have one-way pipes. This network flow problem, all of the pipes are one-way. Um, so I'm not going to do a whole new problem. I'm just going to address one small piece of a network. So here we have a piece of a flow network um, where we've got some one-way pipes, but this pipe here happens to be two-way. So flow could go from X to Y, or it could go from Y to X. We just don't know. So uh, the way we get around that is um, we split this one pipe up into essentially two pipes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one pipe and say, actually, um, it doesn't have one pipe like that. It has a pipe like this uh, with a flow of 15 and then a pipe like that. Uh, with a maximum flow of 15 uh, and then from there we are able to um, uh, put a linear program to this problem so now we've got the net flow at x will look something like uh, ax plus cx plus yx that's all the flow into node x so i've got from a c and from y and then i've also got um, the flow out which is uh, to b uh, and then i've also got to y. And that's going to equal zero. So flow in equals flow out or flow in minus flow out equals zero. And notice I've now got a y x and an x y again. They are different variables. Uh, so just be careful with those. I can repeat the same process at node y. Um, so in I've got d, so dy. I've also got x y. Um, and then out I've got 
ye and yx and that's going to equal zero and in terms of the um, pipe capacity constraints i'm going to have xy is less than or equal to 15 and i'm also going to have yx is less than or equal to 15. okay so um it is treating it as two separate pipes okay you might have a network which is entirely uh, two-way pipes, in which case you would need to do that for every single pipe, except for the pipes out of the source, because they will only ever leave the source, the flow would only ever leave the source, or the flow into the sink. Um, you don't need to consider those as two-way pipes. Okay, uh, so that's how we would deal with that. Okay, and then we've got one third and final problem, uh, which is the longest distances problem, uh, which is... Uh, what we would use to, to solve a CPA problem, critical path analysis, and um, that will give us the critical activities of the network. Um, so that's very similar to um, the shortest distance, except uh, it's the longest distance. So most of this uh, should be familiar to you based on the first example. Um, but there's a slight difference, so we will get to that. OK, so here's my uh, CPA network. So I've got um, a network here with uh, 10 activities it's got two dummy activities as well so we'll look at how we deal with those and we want to write a linear program which will find the longest path through this network um, which is then the critical path through this network um, it does rely on there being no cycles within the network uh, obviously um, otherwise it would uh, kick out infinity to just keep going around and around and around the cycle but we know uh, that can't be true for a CPA network anyway. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to start any of the activities in that cycle. Um, so that's actually not uh, a problem. OK, so it's a path, just like the longest distance. So we know that one of these arcs must um, be used and one not. And then to get into the end node, uh, then one of those arcs must be used and the other not. Um, and it's all about, do we use this arc or do we not? So therefore, again, this one is going to be an indicator variable uh, situation. OK, so the, the two distance ones use indicator variables. And this one um, is uh, the middle one. The flows did not use indicator variables. Okay. All right. Um, so we want to um, maximize the distance. So instead of minimising, we're going to maximise. Now, with the shortest distance, um, all the nodes were labelled A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. Um, but for the critical path analysis one, it's the arcs that are labelled A, B, C, D. So it's um, the variables are now A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. And then we also need two variables for our dummy. Um, so we're going to maximise uh, um, the distance, uh, which is going to be 6A. Okay, if, if A is used, then it counts as 6 towards the um, the distance. Um, we could use capital T for time. And then plus 3B, plus 4C, 6D, 8E. And then we've got 6F, 3G. Uh, 2H. I and a 5j okay so if any one of those arcs is used then it would contribute the coefficient towards the total distance okay if it's not used it won't contribute anything don't forget all of these variables all 10 of them will either be a zero or a one uh, in the output of the linear program okay so the constraints uh, similar to the minimum distance we are going to have a situation where if you enter a node you must leave the node and we're also going to have the situation where we must leave the start node and we must arrive at the end node so each one of our nodes is going to contribute one constraint um so let's make sure we leave node one so a plus b must equal one so either a is one or b is one and the other one is zero. And then also we have I and J must also equal one as well. So either I or J is one and the other one is zero. So one of those is used and one of those is not. Um, then, for example, at node two, um, if we in if we go into node two, so I A is one, we must then also leave node two. So we must either use C or we must use this dummy arc. Now, we've not got a variable assigned to this dummy arc yet because we didn't need it for our object um yeah objective function 
because it doesn't contribute anything. It's got a distance of zero. Um, so it's not got a letter attached to it yet. So I'm just going to call it X. We do need to include it because we may or may not use X in our longest distance. Um, and then similarly, this one down here is going to need a variable as well. So let's call it Y. You can call it whatever you want, but I like X and Y. Um, OK, so if I enter node 2, I must leave it. So therefore, A minus C minus X must equal 0. A minus C minus X equals 0. And then um, do the same thing for node 3. If I enter 3, I must leave it. So if either B or X is 1, they can't both be 1. But if one of them is 1, then one of these must be 1 as well. So minus D minus E. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one of those must be one, so therefore uh, that must equal zero. So either they're both zero, in which case they're both zero to make it zero, or they're one of those is one, and one of those is zero, in which case one of those is one, and one of those is zero uh, to make it zero. Okay, and I'll repeat that for the other nodes as well. Um, but the problem with this is there's no kind of um, upper end restriction on our variables. I'm just going to put a dot, dot, dot there to indicate there's more. Um, We've not told the program that it's, that it's binary, that it's either zero or one. We didn't need that for the minimization case um, because uh, we wanted to minimize the distance. But here we want to maximize the distance. Uh, we need to bound this on the top end. Uh, so we need all these variables to either be zero or one, in which case um, it's the same as saying all of these variables must be less than or equal to one. So um, we also have A is less than or equal to one. B is less than or equal to 1, C is less than or equal to 1, D is less than or equal to 1, and so on. All the way up to J is less than or equal to 1. And then we also have our two dummy constraints, uh, sorry, dummy arcs. Uh, so X must also be less than or equal to 1, and Y must also be less than or equal to 1. Um, okay. Um, right, and that uh, that would then be the whole program. Um, so uh, I didn't quite write all of these constraints out. Uh, there would be one for each node in the end. So I would have eight of these constraints, two with one and six with a zero. And then I would have one for each variable down here. So that's 12, I think. Um, yeah, because I've got 10 um, activities plus the two dummy activities. Um, and they would all need to be less than or equal to one. If you run that program um, through a linear programming solver, then that would give you the optimal solution. Um, in other words, that would give you um, a critical path. It won't necessarily give you all the critical activities because the critical path could dual. Um, but this problem, this linear programming, uh, this sorry, this linear program doesn't solve uh, for the critical activities. It solves for the minimum completion time um, and which activities are critical to get that. Okay, it doesn't mean that they're the only critical activities. Okay, um, right, there's quite a lot in that video, uh, so that's why I've only done the first three. Um, in my next video, uh, we will look at uh, these three problems. These are three brand new problems to uh, the course. You've not met these before, um, and they use uh, bipartite graphs or bipartite networks. Um, so we'll look at those next. Um, any questions, please just pop them in the comments below uh, and I'll get back to you. Uh, but hopefully this video was useful for you in your preparation for this exam. Cheers.